Dear all, welcome back to Aduox. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss about Burj Khalifa Dubai case study. It's a high-rise mixed-use development. Burj Khalifa, it was designed by Adrian Smith of Skidmore Owings and Merrill, whose firm designed the Willis Tower and One World Trade Center. The structural engineering for Burj Khalifa was done by Bill Baker, William Frazier Baker. He is a structural engineering partner in the Chicago office of Skidmore Owings and Merrill. This Google image shows the aerial view of Burj Khalifa site. The site Burj Khalifa Tower is marked at the point A. It is surrounded by a Burj Park as well as the Burj Khalifa Lake. Over the Burj Park and Burj Khalifa Lake, you can see the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Boulevard. So this image, Google image gives you the overview of Burj Khalifa's site plan and about its concept. The architects incorporated the Islamic traditional patterns and modern sophistications to design a structure that will stand the test of the time. Organic and desert influences, the Himankali's desert flower was the main source of inspiration for the architects. The design not only reduces the wind forces on the building but also hollows each tenant's to have an incredible view of the surroundings. And Islamic design influences. From the top of the structure, the Islamic design influences can clearly be seen. It includes the uses of arches and other architectural structures. And about the architecture, the architecture features a triple lobe footprint and abstraction of immunocolis flour. The tower composed of three elements around the central core. The modular Y-shaped structure with setbacks along each of its three wings provides the stable configuration for the structure and provides a good floor plate for the residentials. The 26 helical level decreases the cross section of the tower as it spiraling skywards. The central core emerge at the top and culminates in a sculpted spires. The Y-shaped floor plan maximizes the views of the Arabian Gulf. And about its foundation, the image shows the pictorial descriptions. The superstructure is supported by a large reinforced concrete mat, which is in turn supported by the bore reinforced concrete files. The mat is 3.7 meters thick and it was constructed in a four separate pores totaling 12,500 cubic meters of concrete. The minimum center to center spacing of the piles for the tower is the pile diameter is 1.5 meter and the length of the pile is 43 meters each represents the largest and longest piles conventionally available in that region. A high density, low permeability concrete were used in the foundation as well as a cathodic protection system under the mat to minimize any detrimental effects from corrosive chemicals in a local groundwaters. It is founded on a 3.7 meter thick raft supported on a board piles and the diameter of each pile is about 1.5 meter extending approximately 43 to 50 meter below the base of the raft. The minimum center to center of the pile for the tower is 2.5 times the pile's original diameter. This image shows the actual photograph of the foundation. And about its podium level, the podium provides a base anchoring the tower to the ground, allowing on a great access from three different sides to three different levels of the building. And about its structural systems, the structure is modular in nature with a central hexagonal shaft core and three branches that spreads out at 120 degree from each other. Attached to these branches are wall-like columns of 9 meters spacing that simply drop off as each leg setbacks, avoiding the complex and costly structural transfers. In addition to its aesthetic and functional advantages, the spiraling Y-shape plan was utilized to shape the structural core of Burj Khalifa. This design helps to reduce the wind forces on the tower 
as well as to keep the structure simple and foster constructability. The structural system can be described as a buttress core and consists of high performance concrete wall construction. Each of the wing buttresses, the others via six sided central core or an hexagonal hub. This central core provides the torsional resistance to the structure similar to a closed pipe. The corridor walls extends from the central core to near the each end of the wing terminating in a thickened hammerhead walls. These corridor walls and hammerhead walls behave similar to the webs and flanges of a beam to resist the wing shears and moments. The perimeter columns and flat plate floor construction complete the overall structural systems. The setbacks are organized with the towers grids such that the building stepping is accomplished by aligning the columns above the walls below to provide a smooth load path. As such, the tower does not contain any structural transfers. These setbacks also have the advantages of providing a different width to the tower for each differing flow plates. This stepping and shaping of the tower has the effect of confusing the wind. The wind vortices never get organized for the height of the building because at each new tire the wind encounters a different building shapes. And about its flow plans. This image shows the overall view of a Burj Khalifa's site plan. And number one mark here is Burj Khalifa's arrival core. And number two, we have three separate entries, two, three and eleven. Number two is we have Harmony Hotel entry. And three is a separate entry for the residences. And number eleven is office entry. So the sixes, the number six are the tower gardens. And seven, it's a water future near the residential entry. And next to that water future, we have eight children's play area. And nine is the recreation area. And here at the 10, we have service yard. And opposite to that office entry, we have a weaving deck at four and water features at seven. And at the five in the periphery, we have a lake front promenades. This is all about the site plan of Burj Khalifa. And the ground floor has three separate entries. One for the office, the other one for the hotel and for residence entries. And this floor plan gives you the detail of basement floor plan. So the basement has three times larger than its ground floor footprints. And this shows you the hotel floor plan. So the hotel has one bedroom unit, two bedroom units and four bedroom units along with the staff cafes and executive suites. And typical residential floors. So in a residential floors, they have one bedroom unit, two bedroom and four bedroom units. The layout showing the floor plans, two bedroom units and its different types. And this one is a typical office floor plan. Floor plans. This image gives you the breakdown of floor plans. And about its communication flows, the top four flows have been reserved for communication and broadcasting. This flows occupies the level just below the spires. The crowning touch of Burj Khalifa is its telescopic spire comprised of more than 4000 tons of structural steel. The spire was constructed from inside the building and jacked to its full height of over 200 meters using a hydraulic pump. The spire also houses the communication equipments. And about its mechanical flows, Seven double story height mechanical flows houses the equipment that bring Burj Khalifa to the life. Distributed over every 30 stories, the mechanical flows houses the electrical substations, water tanks and pumps, air handling units, 
which are essential for the operation of the tower and the comfort of its occupants. An outdoor observation deck is on the 124th floor at 452 meter. It was the highest observation deck. Burj Khalifa opened 148th floor sky level at 555 meter, once again giving its highest observation deck from 2014 onwards. About its exterior cladding, it is comprised of reflective glassing with aluminium and textured stainless steel spandrel panels and stainless steel vertical tubular fins. Close to 26,000 glass panels, each individually hand cuts were used. The cladding system is designed to withstand Dubai's extreme summer heat. And about its maintenance, cleaning, it is a challenge met using a custom made building maintenance units called BMUs, while the pinnacle is reserved for specialized rope technicians. With all 18 building maintenance units in operation, the facet will usually take two to three months to clean. Burj Khalifa is a home to 57 elevators and 8 escalators. The building services, fireman's elevators, have a capacity of 5500 kg and it is the world's tallest service elevator. Burj Khalifa is the first mega high rise in which certain elevators are programmed to permit control evacuation for certain fire or security events. Burj Khalifa's observatory elevators are double tech camps with a capacity of 12 to 15 people per cap, traveling at 10 meters per second. About its sky lobby. The sky lobby is an intermediate floor where residents, guests and executives will change from an express elevator to a local elevator which stops at every floor within a certain segment of the building. Burj Khalifa's sky lobbies are located on the level 43rd, 76th and 133rd floor which will include a lounge area and kiosk among the other amenities. Burj Khalifa's plumbing system Burj Khalifa water system supplies an average of 9,46,000 liters of water per day through 100 kilometers of pipe. Additionally, 213 kilometers of piping serves the fire emergency and 34 kilometers supplies the chill water for the air conditioning system. And the wastewater system uses the gravity to discharge water from plumbing fixtures, flow drains, mechanical equipments and storm waters to the city municipal sewers. And about its electricity, the tower's peak electrical demand is 36 megawatt, equal to about 360,000 100 watt bulbs operating simultaneously. And about its air conditioning, the air conditioning system draws air from the upper floors where the air is cooler and cleaner than on the ground. At peak cooling times, the tower's cooling is equal to that provided by 13,000 short tons of melting ice in one day or about 47 megawatts. And about its fire safety, the concrete surrounds all stables and the building services and fireman's elevators will have a capacity of 5500 kg and it will be the world's tallest service elevator. There are pressurized air conditioned refuge areas located approximately at every 25th floor. The first applications of lifeboat evacuations, refuge levels are at 42nd, 75th and 111 and 138th floor. And 10 elevators are available for the emergency evacuations. And about its landscape, the parks are 11 hectares of greenery and water features, serves both entry to Burj Khalifa as well the outdoor living spaces. The landscape design includes three distinct areas to serve each of towers three uses, hotels, residences and the office spaces. Spectacular stone paving patterns welcoming the visitors at each entry levels. The landscape design includes six major water features, the main entry fountain, hotel entry fountains, residential entry fountains and the grand water terrace, children's fountain pool and the sculptural fountains. The main entry drive is circled with a palm court, water features and outdoor spaces and a forest grew above. The grand terrace features garden spaces all around the pedestrian circulations, custom site furnishing, a functional island and a lake edge promenade. Burj Khalifa on a recap. So the tallest man-made structure ever built opens in Dubai, a mixed-use development which has office, retail, hotel and the residential spaces. So the Burj Khalifa was revealed to be a 828 meter high, 
far taller than the previous record holder of Taipei 101. The world's highest mask and swimming pool will meanwhile locate on 158th and 76th floors of Burj Khalifa. And interior images of Burj Khalifa. Thank you.